Aloha, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's program, Don't Just Age, Engage. I'm your host, Larry Grimm. Thank you for joining me again. Every two weeks, we have this same title program every, two, uh, every Tuesday, second Tuesday, and uh, explore the internal issues of aging. Many of our uh, wonderful programs on Think Tech Hawaii are issue-oriented, socially oriented, social concerns, and I'm so proud of them. Please take advantage of all those. And in this one, it gets a little more focused on the internal dimensions of aging and what, what, what's involved in truly aging in such a way that you have an extraordinary elderhood. Will you age so that you are not a victim of your aging, but are engaging in planning your life for an extraordinary elderhood? That's what I'm about. Uh, I, am, uh, I, uh, I am a pastor. I've been a Presbyterian minister. I've been involved in chaplaincy work with long-term care and hospice care. I've had a great exposure to people of all different stages and ages. And this stage of life has intrigued me for uh, um, many, many years. And now that I'm part of that stage of life myself, and also uh, have come through uh, wonderful learning experiences in caring for people, I can bring the resources of knowledge and expertise into a coaching relationship. My coaching relationship is entitled <clears throat> um, join a, 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 a global community for your extraordinary elderhood. Would you bring that up, please, on the website? <clears throat> I would like to invite you to join a global community for your extraordinary elderhood at personalcoachingforlifeandfaith.com. Thank you. Well, the question that's kind of plaguing, uh, interesting me this morning is, why should I have a coach? Why, at this age and stage of life, could I think I would benefit? Do I think I could benefit from a life coach? And we're going to take on that question today. First of all, uh, I could, of course, tell you that I'm, I'm the best that you could possibly find. And that's what the reason that you should hire me. <laughs> But that's not persuasive, and <laughs> that's certainly not convincing. I, um, I want to, first of all, make a distinction between coaching and counseling. <clears throat> People who engage in counseling, and I have done counseling, when I do a counseling program, I'm with my person, my client, to explore the past, their past, to enable them to discover the dynamics of the past, to find out what are the internal conflicts maybe that they carry in themselves that need to be resolved and how they can resolve those. And that's part of my counseling work. But coaching has to do with life goals, a vision of your life, and action plan to reach those. So that, so that I help you identify goals for your life, uh, figure out an action plan with resources. There's such an abundance of resources available. Uh, there certainly are on our island, our island here, but no matter where you're looking and watching from, there's an abundance of resources available for you in your aging age, aging stage of life. Uh, I call that the elderhood life. You had childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and now you have an elderhood. Uh, in that elderhood, there is a transition from adulthood to elderhood. And I teach five spiritual tasks that you have to, that need to be paid attention in order for that, that shift and that movement and transition to be effective. We go through five stages, or excuse me, five spiritual tasks, uh, grieving, sorting out stories, forgiving, preparing, and letting go. We, ex we do exercises around all of each of those five spiritual tasks that enable my client to feel freer 
and um, resolved on some things. <clears throat> then, the, then the point comes of where we say, okay, what's your life going to look like? Here's this elderhood time, and <clears throat> it can be the most productive, it can be with the most exciting and satisfying time of your life in which you integrate all of that past into one seamless flow of your life story. So that's what coaching is about. And that specifically is what my coaching is about, so that you will have an extraordinary elderhood. The one thing that I don't want people to have feel is that they're elderly. I want them to feel as though they're, I don't want them to feel as though we're victims. They are a victim of aging. But rather empower, empowered to make decisions, <clears throat> to make choices about their future, and to work towards those. And that's what we'll look at more closely today. What are the dynamics of, of our life? I'd like to pull up a graphic that's called four key. In every human experience, there are four dimensions. There is a spiritual dimension, the blue, a physical dimension, the green, yellow dimension is relational, and the red is economical. And we'll look at all of those, each of those separately. But generally speaking, coaching, as I said, has to do with your vision and your life goals. What do you want in your elderhood? Who are you now as you enter your elderhood? I'm fond of speaking about my brother. My older brother, when he entered past the age of 70, says that he started thinking, the first time he'd done it, started thinking to himself, how, when, and where? And of course, what he was talking about, how, when, and where will I die? These are things that he never thought of before. And the stage theorist, well, I'm a stage theorist. I like to frame my understanding of things in terms of stages. People, as we go through stages, have separate issues and separate tasks to fulfill according to that stage of life. <clears throat> and I, I maintain that we do that as we enter the elder as well. It's a movement from productivity in adulthood, creativity in adulthood, external orientation, to an inner orientation in adult and elderhood. We ask that question, what's it all about? What has it been about for me? What is it that I have uh, enjoyed, achieved? How is it that I've made an impact on this world? What am I going to leave behind? And how is it going to benefit society and my family and everybody that I love? So that's, that's the change. That's the shift in a generalized terms. It becomes different specifically for each person and each client that I have. But I want to look at these four dimensions of the human experience with you and talk about elderhood in terms of these four dimensions of the human experience. <clears throat> Let's bring up that graphic now. The first dimension in the upper left-hand quadrant is spiritual. Now, sometimes in our lives, we encounter our sense of weakness, and ironically, or perhaps paradoxically, that weakness also becomes a strength or puts us in touch with our strengths. So the spiritual dimension, which is 25% of our lives, is a way of being internally oriented and conscious of what's going on in our interior life. Okay. The interior life involves emotions. It involves belief systems. It involves a consciousness of the divine, a consciousness of spirit. <clears throat> it involves a relationship with something greater than ourselves uh, and, and the ways in which we think about and phrase our, our uh, experience, our, our reflections, our reflections on those experiences. It's that whole internal perspective. And so, what are some of the possible goals 
that you might choose in elderhood that have to do with the spiritual quadrant. For one, you may decide that you would like help in, and one of your goals is to minimize the level of anxiety that you're having. Uh, <clears throat> I've been, as I said, a Presbyterian minister in my career, and one of the phrases that I loved to preach about was Jesus' words, don't be anxious about tomorrow. Your Father in heaven knows what you need. Uh, anxiety is always so strong for us, especially when we're imagining what's going to happen in the future. And again, when we talk about it that way, we're putting ourselves as a victim in the future, that we're going to be subjected somehow to the to the uh, horrors of a future <clears throat> that we cannot even imagine at this point. And of course, that shoots our anxiety level up. And the higher our, our anxiety, perhaps you know this already, but the higher our level of our anxiety, the more cortisol we have, and the more the less we have access to our upper brain, to our our um, neocortex. Now, the neocortex is involved in analyzing, uh, evaluating, uh, planning, creative thinking, process, problem solving. And the more we have anxiety in our future or anxiety about the, uh, the past even or something that we brought forward into our lives, the less we're able to access that problem solving tool in our minds. So lowering anxiety has a tremendous impact on enabling us to envision the future and to look, plan a future and to respond to the events that come before us and the choices that we have to make in the immediacy of our everyday lives. So up in the spiritual upper left quadrant, we may want very much to have, have that um, anxiety level reduced. There are other feelings that come along with that. Uh, there, we may find that we have a great deal of grief, so much loss in life, and that the grief is overwhelming also our ability to make decisions. And so you may wish to, to uh, minimize and lower the, the dimensions of grief that you feel in your everyday life even. We can work for that. Um, it may be that some of the anxiety or some of your feelings and emotions are about guilt <clears throat> from the past. <clears throat> so often if we have guilt we're, and regret, we're living in the past. If we have anxiety, we're living in the future. It makes it difficult to live. Both of those make it difficult to live in the immediacy of the everyday life uh, with all the confidence and the, and the good skills that you have. So those are some of the issues that come up uh, and some of the possible goals, reduce anxiety, uh, manage grief, reduce guilt. I have one, um, uh, manage guilt and, and uh, feel free to uh, feel excited about the future of our lives. To be a child again, come as a little child and join in the uh, planning of the future for a, an exciting and really wonderful um, elderhood. Now the upper right-hand corner is what we usually think of aging. It's the physicality. <clears throat> so many of us feel as though we're dra <clears throat> dragged, kicking and screaming into this stage of life by the diminishment of our physical ability. <clears throat> and it may happen that, we, <clears throat> that our, uh, our physicality uh, changes for sure. It does not necessarily mean that it's going to be uh, a downhill slide into decrepitude, although I think our society and our culture believes that and really wants us to think that that is so. I once was looking at a magazine, a, a yoga book that I had picked up, flipped through the pages, and I found a woman who was bent in half in a position that I could hardly imagine. Even, even moving towards myself. This was when I was much younger. And I read, and she was actually 97 years old and was bent in half in this position of yoga. Um, 
she had begun her yoga practice at the age of 70. And she was able to uh, really to rise up in the capabilities uh, that she would never have imagined herself capable of doing um, earlier. <clears throat> so <clears throat> there are things that can be done in this elder stage of life physically that we can, you can plan on and per pursue uh, when you have established goals like that. So physicality has to do with everything that we can measure. What do you need to decide about your health? What do you need to know? My coaching is both emotional in that upper left-hand quadrant and, and informational in the upper right-hand quadrant. What are some of the things that you need to take care of physically that um, are, is a goal for you? You want to reduce weight. You want to strengthen your body. You want to expand your capacity to, uh, to breathe. You want to sleep better. Sleep is so important for the uh, processes of aging. Uh, what, are, what are the goals that you want to establish with regard to your, your physicality? <clears throat> want to do more hiking? Do you want to go out on the surfboard and learn to surf? <laughs> Why not? And uh, it's, but it takes some steps and some stages of planning. And so, so when we are working with a life coach, we're step, first identifying what we want. A lot of people don't know and are afraid to ask for what they really want in their lives. Making a, and then second, making an action plan on how to reach those. When you have a plan, you can change course if you need to, you can modify the plan so that it's most helpful and effective. <clears throat> As someone said, if you don't know where you're going, <clears throat> you're certainly not gonna get there. <clears throat> we have yearnings and longings for our hearts and for our bodies. We really can have those clearly identified so that we are moving towards those. And those, once we, as we establish those, we feel freer throughout our lives throughout from day to day it gives us an opportunity to take advantage of what's in the immediacy the right now the here and now so upper left hand quadrant facing me upper left hand quadrant we um uh spirituality your inner life upper right hand quadrant physicality and as we get closer to our dying physically the more excited and fulfilling life can be, the more exciting and fulfilling our lives can be. The bottom right-hand corner deals with our cultural norms. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the bottom left-hand corner, the yellow, deals with our cultural norms and ourselves. What are the societies that you've been a part of? What, um, <clears throat> where did you get the values that you hold dear? Uh, all of us inherit the values. We inherit a belief system from a church, from a religious body, from um, our cultural setting, uh, from our schools. We are taught certain values that we are expected to uphold. In our family life, we have certain values that are transmitted to us and shape us as into the people that we are. <clears throat> well, what is at some point we have to make those our own? And we make those our own by or don't make them our own by critically an analyzing what we want to believe and what works for us in terms of those values. <clears throat> I had one, uh, one patient, uh, one client whose mother was in the, um, she just moved her into a facility for her long-term care. And every time she went to visit her mother, her mother would just tell her why did you do this to me I'm, you're supposed to keep me at home I'm, that's where I belong with you in your home she was the oldest daughter in the family and she had a cultural background that taught this that the oldest daughter had to take care of the, of the mother aging parent in her home and she had had her mother in her home and came home at one point the, the daughter did one day and found her mother on the kitchen floor she had fallen and could not get up and did not have anybody to call, any way to get any help. And so she was on the floor for a good part of the day. 
Well, the daughter said that was it. The daughter had to work. The daughter had a husband and children to take care of. Um, so mom moved into a facility and their mom had safety, security. People who took care of her were conscious of her every day, all day long. And, and so I said, you know, you did, but the daughter felt so guilty, she said. And I said, but you did the thing that was the best for your mother. You gave her the best gift you could, which was a place of security, warmth, and provision. Well, we worked with her guilt, and she was able to decide not to feel guilty anymore. And, uh, and so she took on a different set of values from what her culture had intended her to hold. There's a place where we have, we have to find ourselves within the system of values that we hold, either within it or opt for another one. And part of coaching is to be exposed to others, to have that looked at closely, and to make some different choices. The reason that is, is because the lower right-hand corner, or the red <clears throat> cycle there, part of the cycle, is... Uh, economical, I call it. Now, I like the word economical because it comes from the Greek word ekos, ekonos, ek, oikos, oikos. And the Greek word oikos means household. And so when we talk about economical, we're talking about the whole household of, of life, how we structure our household, how we come and go, how uh, uh, things look, uh, what, how, do, how does the environment reflect our values? Um, how do the things that we engage in reflect our values? If I am value from, if I bought into a culture of value of love my neighbor as I love myself, am I opening myself up to my neighbor? Am I economically moving towards that <clears throat> and caring for one another in that way? And then what way? Did I join a church? Did I join a service organization? Do I want to be involved in international work? Um, foreign affairs relations, how do we then take our energy and resources of time, energy, and money and shape those into activity in the world in which we live? <clears throat> yeah, so, so what could be more fulfilling than to have an opportunity <clears throat> at, in your elderhood stage of life <clears throat> to be a part of mentoring program or to read books to children at a, a local school. Um, there are so many opportunities to then to do this kind of thing at this stage of life. And if you know what goals you're going to reach out for in that area, you know how to make a, an action plan. And that's what it, this whole thing is about the human experience and the four keys to unlock, unlock your extraordinary elderhood. You work in the four different areas. Now, you can work with anybody in these four areas. And I maintain that anytime you and I have made a change of our lives to um, take on something new, to engage in some kind of endeavor that we haven't been involved in already, we have found a coach. Either in, Maybe it was something that we read, but we found some coaching that, we, that helps us model our lives and also to make plans in terms of the goals that we want to reach and to follow through with those. And one of the, that's the third important piece of, <clears throat> of uh, having a coach, and that's accountability. You have an opportunity to check in every week on a one-on-one online coaching with me. You check in to the, <clears throat> to, uh, I check in with you to see how it's going. Have you kept to your goals this week? Did you, uh, did you do what you needed to do in order to lose weight, in order to get stronger, in order to change your physicality? Did you do some meditation to help strengthen your awareness of God? What have you done? Did you worship with the community so that you have a strong relationship and bond of love within a, a, a community that you know? So that's, <clears throat> so one-on-one -on -one accountability is planning and accountability is the third piece on um, um, third piece in coaching. Um, in addition to that, the second thing that we do, be, uh, you may you may have been 
very much aware in your own life uh, with COVID of how isolated and uh, lonely we can feel. feel. Some, one of the worst things about aging is that we tend to get lonely, tend to get isolated, cut back. Even we, Our children may not be available to us. They may not be visiting us. They may, in fact, think that we are not really wanting us to be around, wanting them to be around. Um, it's not hardly true, but um, <clears throat> or they may find it difficult to to visit while they see maybe and we're struggling with some physical issues. Uh, we're going to work with that. We're going to find out ways <clears throat> that, in fact, we can get around that with them. But also, we develop an online group uh, of about nine elders who are also w interested with you in, in uh, making your elderhood extraordinary. And I call those elder guilds. So we have a weekly online meeting of your elder guild. And what we do is share the best practices for aging. We can do that best practices for aging for those of us who are involved in elderhood, but also for those of us who have parents and other friends and family in elderhood, best practices for caregiving also. So, <clears throat> um, and then finally, I have an elderhood academy of which you can be a part. It has all kinds of opportunities for learning and growing and, uh, and, and expanding your understanding of your own life in that elderhood. So, let me show you again my website, the homepage, landing page of my website. Become a part of a global community for your extraordinary elderhood. Personal Coaching for Life and Faith has all the contact information you need to get in touch with me and to take on a free opportunity for a short counsel, uh, coaching session with me, just so we can get to know each other. You can kind of test me out. And I wish you the very best in your life. I'll be back in two weeks. And I wish you aloha. Mm -hmm.